Hello, I have Hilda with me today. She doesn't say much, but she's an excellent listener. And she's also a bit cheap and lightweight, inexpensive. You're not cheap, you're inexpensive. She's inexpensive and lightweight, so I've got my foot on the stand because there's a bit of a breeze and she's probably gonna go over at some point. But I brought Hilda out so that I could drape her with this, which is finished, it's off the hook. Uh, it hasn't got any sleeves. Hello, no sleeves yet. But the actual vest part, which is this bit, is done. And I wanted to show it sort of on a, on a body um, but not with it being on my body because I can't talk to you and do that at the same time. I'll, I'll rupture something. So I'm going to drape this as soon as I figure out which way up it goes. I've been looking at it for long enough. You'd think I would just know automatically. Here we go. So I haven't woven in the ends because I forgot. I finished this at just past midnight. So I think I just sort of went straight to bed. Now, so I'm just going to drape this. So this edge here forms the collar. It's a circle shrug or a circle vest. It's not a shrug, it's a vest. It's a circle vest. So that forms the wide collar. <laughs> Stand up, Hilda. That forms the collar there, and then it goes into this shape here, which I'll show you in a second. But I wanted to point out that something really rather wonderful happened with the pooling. So if you have a look at these pointy ends, so this is sort of the, the decorative ends. I don't know that that's showing up very well because there's more behind it, but I'll do my best. You'll notice that there's at least three rounds where the colour has pooled to match the previous round. So I've got the red and purple, and then that'll go into, well, it's really sort of an orangey, not a red. And then that'll go into the red, and then that will pool into the red and orange. And that has worked all the way around. I've got a photograph to show you what I mean. So if you have a look around the edges of this photograph, you will see that there's the whole rainbow spectrum has pooled brilliantly in these ends and it looks like I've done something brilliant on purpose. It was a complete fluke and it's worked so well and I'm very excited about it. So I'm gonna show you the back. I'm not gonna try and turn Hilda round as such because um, she's a bit lightweight, but I'm just gonna lift her up. I think I can just lift her up, there we go. So here's the back. As, it's, as it stands on a stand. Don't fall off, she's got no arms, it's very tricksy. And then that goes down into the hem at the bottom there. So it's looking really, really good. It falls to just below my knees when I'm wearing it, um, which is a good length to have. I'm really, really, ooh, really, really pleased with all of the color pooling, but especially the pooling on the ends here, which does look like I've been clever. So that's why I chose this yarn, because I knew that there would be, because it's a short color change, you can see, that round there's got some yellow and then that round underneath it's got a little bit of yellow too. I thought with all of these colours being a bit chaotic, if we could get some pooling in there it would sort of hold it together and it really has. I like the way the collar falls as well. So now I've just got to get some sleeves on it. How long could that take? Probably Christmas. I'll probably get this done by Christmas. Now my thinking now is what am I going to do with Hilda because if I leave her standing next to me she is going to fall over. But that is the progress on that. I've got the ends to weave in, but I'm really, really happy with how it looks. I'm going to show it to you again because I might as well because I've got Hilda. Um, so yeah, there is an option when you're doing this pattern to do these rounds with a longer stitch so that you get a longer um, cardigan. I thought about it, but with the last one I make being the last one I made, hmm, use your words, being so long, I thought I'm not going to risk it. And as I said, it does fall to just below my knees, which is fine and good. So all I need to do now is the sleeves. I love the way this has worked. I'm really, really happy with this. I love all of these different stitches in here. I love the way it hangs. I love the way it drapes. It will stretch out a little bit and get a bit longer because crochet tends to. Um, but for the time being, that's how that looks. And now what I'm gonna do is lean Hilda against a wall, perhaps, or put her back in her box. And then I've got something that has come off the loom because that thing that was on the loom last week, the flame one with the red and the orange and the black and everything, it's off the loom and it's something interesting. Well, it is interesting. I'm really happy with it, but it's, there's, um, it's a little longer than I was anticipating. So let me just, I'm just gonna put Hilda back in her box and then I'll show you that. Give me, well, give me a quick edit. Flame, off the loom. So you can see in that roll there, the colour repeats. So it's the uh, fire colours and black, then the fire colours and black, and then the fire colours, because that's how that works. Uh, it's also been wet finished. So it's off the loom and it's wet finished because yesterday was quite warm and I knew that it would dry. It is blooming beautifully. It has filled all the gaps in. It's a nice, nice, solid, smooth weave. I did say I thought it might be over three metres long and I was right. It was over three metres, right? It is over three metres long. It is actually 3.8 metres long, <laughs> excluding fringe. 
So it's quite a long one. Um, I did try it on before I went finished it. I did like one wrap around my neck and it was still on the ground. So this is one for multi wraps. This is a multi wrapper. So what I'm going to do is show you the length because it is all about these colour pools here. Uh, so there we go. Is that even, I can't really see because my screen's not great. But we'll do this and hope it's going well. So then we go into the black. There's a mosquito trying to get up my nose. Into the black and then back into this colour pooling here. And it's really, really worked exactly how I wanted it to. It's just a little longer because I wanted the three repeats. If I'd gone with the two repeats, here we go back into the black. If I'd gone with the two repeats like I originally planned, which just didn't feel dramatic enough, um, it would have been shorter and probably more manageable. But as it is, it's very long and very dramatic. So I really, really like how the colour's pooling in there. That's come out so well, so I'm thrilled with that. On the big loom, no progress from last week. I haven't touched it. I've been working, focusing on this and on the vest, and I've warped up the little loom, because why wouldn't I? So the big loom looks like it did last week, which I'll show you now. And while you're looking at that, I will get the little loom. And the sun moved, so I moved my camera. So here is the little loom. It is a skipped dent. Skipped dents have not been working for me lately, but that is no reason to not try again. Uh, failure is just the first step to glory or something. I don't know. Put that on a tea towel. I don't mind. Um, so yes, skipped dent. So you can see there's gaps there where I've not put a thread through on purpose, uh, which will give me a stripe texture, maybe perhaps if it works the way I'm hoping it will. This yarn is Bendigo Woolen Mills Multicoloured Sock Yarn in the colourway Summer Sky, which looks like this. It's peaches and purples and peachy purples and, and purpley peaches. And then on the shuttle it's more of the same and that is a yellowy peachy yellow with peach in it. Stop me if I get really technical on my colourways. So that's quite fresh on the loom. There's the hem stitching. Um, I don't know that it will be off the loom for next week. I really must focus on the big loom because I want to get the big loom off the table because I've only got one table because of uh, speed and efficiency and because I haven't got room for two. If I had room for two, I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't have a problem. So once I get the big loom finished and can put the big loom away, I can get the sewing machine out. I've got a lot of sewing to catch up on. I've got bags to make. I've got a lot of fabric for Moore's bags. I've got a dress that I want to make. I've just got lots of stuff that I want to sew and I haven't got a table to do it on currently because there's a big loom all over it. So once I get the big loom finished, which I think will probably be priority over this one, uh, no offence, um, but we'll see how I we'll see how I travel, we'll see how I get on, um, and that is all I have for you this week. So have a lovely rest of your week, have a lovely start for next week. Thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourself, and bye for now. And goodbye from the chicken who has opinions. Are you having opinions? Oh, she doesn't want to say anything if I'm looking at her. Oh, <laughs>